There are currently nine active fires burning in California this morning. Well, luckily, we don't have as many fires to report as we've had in the last few weeks, and the Kincaid fire, which burned for more than two weeks, has finally been contained as of Wednesday night. 40,000 people have been evacuated and 10,000 homes are currently threatened. On the East Coast, six different states hit records for the coldest temperatures recorded in the month of November. However, this won't be the coldest air of the season as we're expecting another surge to bring record-breaking temps at the beginning of next week. Besides allowing students to enjoy the beautiful SoCal weather, they also provide Wi-Fi hotspots for students doing socially distant learning. Well, if you're one of the 50 million people expected to travel for the holidays like me, then you probably want to know what the weather is going to be like on Thanksgiving. Right here in Orange, we're finally starting to see some sweater weather. That's why I have my long sleeves on today. I'm standing in front of the historic Memorial Hall, where students wrote Black Lives Matter in chalk, despite pushback from campus police officers. Happy first week of October to everyone. It is a beautiful 75 degrees and sunny right here in the beautiful city of Orange. So make sure you take advantage of that wonderful weather and kind of hang out today outside. For our Orange County forecast, we're looking at about 78 in Westminster, super high 80 in Orange, 77 in Newport, 74 in Laguna, which is a little bit strange because usually Newport and Laguna are about the same temperature. 72 in Irvine and San Clemente. Going a little bit more north of Orange County, we're looking at 73 in Santa Barbara, 74 in Avalon and San Diego, 81 in Anaheim, 75 in Oceanside, and 78 in Los Angeles. I don't know about you guys, but I'm checking out Halloween Horror Nights this weekend, so I'll be enjoying that high of 78 in Los Angeles. And for our five-day forecast, it's going to be sunny today and throughout the rest of the week until Tuesday. It's going to be really beautiful. It'll get a little bit high of 86 on Monday and lows of 50s, 60s throughout the week. But it's going to be super beautiful sunny weather. I hope you enjoy this warm weather while you can. I'm Jules Rector and have a fantastic spooky season. The fires may be contained, but Southern California Edison is taking no chances. The utility issued an alert to more than 33,000 customers that power may be shut off as a precaution against fires. Among the areas that may be affected for this weekend, Los Angeles, Riverside, San Bernardino, and Santa Barbara counties. This comes a week after the largest planned power outage in California's history. The Saddle Ridge Fire has finally been contained after burning more than 8,000 acres in four days. The fire caused two deaths, destroyed 17 homes, and damaged 58 buildings. It began near the base of a California Edison transmission tower. PG&E is facing criticism after over 1 million people in Northern California were without power last week, becoming the largest planned power outage in the state's history. LA Times columnist Steve Lopez blamed PG&E for being part of the wildfire problem for decades and asks the question, can California survive the twin threats of climate change and further utility company mismanagement? However, PG&E claims the planned power outages have prevented wildfires in many counties. Steve Lopez is not the only one upset with how the fires have been handled. Governor Gavin Newsom is also unsatisfied with how PG&E has handled the situation. As it relates to compensating people that uh, have been impacted, uh, I believe they should be compensated and we will pursue that. Investigators are still trying to determine the cause of the fire. It's a very special day here at the Fox Performing Arts Center in Riverside. These people are waiting to congratulate their loved ones on the dream of their lifetime becoming U.S. citizens. I brought my dad, Hernan Contreras, to get his citizenship. He is 80 years old and he didn't have to pay a penny and he is totally, totally happy and blessed that he was able to do this. Claudia Santos is waiting for her father, Hernan Contreras, who thought this day might never come. He has been trying to become a citizen for over 50 years. He got his, 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 not his uh, green card like in the, uh, in the 80s. So he's been trying, but you know, it's really expensive to become a U.S. citizen. So he didn't have the funds to do it. So when we found the, uh, the senior center, they were able to do it totally for free. He's looking forward to go to visit, to go to Mexico, visit his brother and all that. He's, he's thrilled. Hernan came from Guadalajara in 1960 and has tried to become a citizen ever since.
At 80 years old, with the help of his local senior citizen center, Ardnan was able to get his citizenship for free. Today, with his certificate and American flag in hand, he embraced his daughter Claudia to celebrate this long-awaited milestone. He says he wanted to do it. He says that at, the, at that time, back in the days, it was really hard to do it. Posiblemente se nos hubieran quitado ya la la residencia. Yeah, he was afraid that they'll take away his residency. Todavía no hay problema. He says now there's no problem. And when it comes to pride for his country, Hernán has a lot of it. Y dar hasta mi última gota de sangre por pelear en este país ya al último. He says he'll give every 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 ounce of his blood to fight for this country.